In this demonstration, we're going to see how we can balance the trade-off of model fidelity and simulation speed. We're designing an electromechanical actuator with current and speed control. Our current design tracks the reference signal very well. However, we made some assumptions in the design phase so that we could iterate quickly. We designed our current con and speed controllers in Simulink. However, we know in the final design they'll be implemented as an analog circuit. We would like to test this in simulation. We have been driving our motor with an averaged voltage. However, we know in the final design it will be driven with pulse width modulation. We would like to test the effects of both of these in simulation. We'll do this using Sim Electronics. With Sim Electronics, we can implement the controller as an analog circuit and then test this comparing it to the original design to see what effect this has. We can also easily configure the model to use a pulse width modulated voltage to drive the motor. And then we can take a close look at the results to see what effect it has on the current in the motor and the torque that it produces. I'll now switch over to the model so that you can see how this is done. Here is the model that we're working with. Our electromechanical actuator is implemented using Sim Electronics. A DC motor drives a worm gear and a lead screw to extend and contract an actuator. Our con control system has been implemented using Simulink so that we could use the control design tools. And when we run the simulation, we can see that it tracks the reference signal very well. We would like to see how this will perform when we implement it as the final analog circuit. So we can easily configure this to use the analog circuit. Now when we look inside the control system we can see that we have band limited op amps, resistors and other analog components. What we'll do is we'll use a, a MATLAB script to configure this simulation and test both variants. So first we'll run it using the Simulink version of the control system and then the script will reconfigure the model and run it using the analog circuit. On this plot we can see how the two compare. There are some differences between these two, these two implementations so we may need to redesign our control system to accommodate for the effects of the analog circuit. Currently our model is being our motor is being driven in averaged mode where we apply an average voltage to the DC motor. We know in the final design it will be driven with a pulse width modulation. So we can configure our our H bridge and PWM driver to generate a PWM signal. Now you can see that we are simulating with pulse width modulation with pulsed width modulation. When I run the simulation this time, it will run much slower because there are many more steps that the solver has to take in order to capture all the individual switching events. I'll show you a plot generated from the data that came from the model and we can see that the green line represents the average results. They're very close to the results from pulse width modulation but we can see that there are differences in the current that is produced and then the torque that the motor would produce. This is something we would want to test in simulation to see that there wouldn't be any unnecessary vibrations due to the pulse width modulation. We could even go a step further in testing implementation and implement the entire H-bridge as an analog circuit. Now if I go into the H-bridge model we can see that we have implemented the H-bridge using MOSFETs, diodes, optoisolators, and other components. So here you can see that we could go to another level of detail and test the power being dissipated in the MOSFETs or make sure that the control algorithm is allowing the MOSFETs to conduct at the right times. In this demonstration we have seen how we can use Sim Electronics to easily balance the trade-off of model fidelity and simulation speed.